Your teenage child has been diagnosed with persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and functional neurological disorder, short for FND, and you as a parent are so worried about your child but not really sure how to push or get this, letting the child call the shot. If that is you feeling disempowered as a parent to be a sturdy leader, then watch this video. Hi, my name is Dr. Lee. I'm a pediatric health psychologist and chronic pain survivor myself. My mission is to help teens and their parents resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND so that they can get their life back and feel like normal again because I truly believe that every teen deserves so much better in their lives, especially when they're struggling with chronic pain and FND. If you're new to this channel, welcome and make sure to grab a PDF parenting guide on how to help your child at home struggling with chronic pain and FND. The link is down below. So today's video is about how you as a parent navigate your child. So as you can imagine, in my practice and also in my online program, I've been talking to so many parents and teens who are struggling with chronic pain and FND. And I hear from these families, not all of them, but many of them, struggling with how to push and how to let their child take the lead. And what happens is that a lot of times they feel bad or guilty about keep pushing their child because it is so unbearable for the parents to see their child struggling and suffering in agony and pain and what have you, right? And so then what happens eventually is that the parenting style changes over time to passive or passive aggressive, including feeling very frustrated. And so sometimes you're acting very softy and then letting things loosey goosey while other times you're like, all right, I had enough. You have to do this no matter what, you know? So kind of like going between the pendulum of being passive and being very authoritarian. I wouldn't necessarily say aggressive, you know, but more like a militant leadership kind of thing. So the question is, is there anything wrong with it? Well, it's a parenting style, so there's nothing wrong with it. Really the question is, how is it working for you? How is it actually helping your child wanting to do things so then he or she or they can get better, which is exactly what you want as a parent, but you cannot just keep pushing and pulling and then playing this game, hoping that your child is going to finally get it, right? Because most of the times these children tend to feel confused and if not frustrated, and what happens is they become defensive right? So I hear a lot of teens say, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. Just leave me alone, you know, or I just don't feel like doing it. So I'm not going to do it. Whatever that doing is, right? Whether it's a homework, school, or getting into treatment or any of that stuff. And this happens a lot of times. And in my program, I talk a lot about the importance of empowering your child. And some parents do get confused, including the teens, thinking, oh, that means I get to do whatever I want. So I can wake up anytime I want and I can go to school anytime I want. And if I don't feel like doing this practice and all the strategies that I'm learning, I don't have to do it when I don't want to. And in the meantime, parents are feeling very helpless and hopeless thinking, well, I have to let my child take a lead and empower my child. So that means I can't really do anything or say anything or ask any questions. And then they feel frustrated. Let's just be clear here. When I say empowerment, that means the child taking responsibility to carry through the things they're supposed to be doing on their own. So when I say that they have a control of their body and their mind and their schedule and their responsibility, it's not just they can be loosey goosey doing whatever they want. Yes, I want them to take care of themselves independently. Absolutely. And yes, I want them to be the one to initiate all of these strategies and tasks and responsibilities and all of that stuff on their own. If they can communicate that with their parents, that would be great. But the thing is, if you're doing it, then your parents can see it, all right? So then they are starting to notice, oh, my child is doing great. And actually I am seeing the changes. That becomes part of the communication strategies. Is that an ideal way to communicate with their parents? 
Well, not really, you know, however, at least parents can see the changes, right? So it's really important for you guys to know that when I say the importance of empowerment, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to let go of all of the control. And actually, it is really important for you as a parent to be a sturdy leader instead of letting your child dictate whatever he, she, they want. So here's an example. Let's say your child's not going to school or not wanting to go to school or coming home frequently saying, oh, my head hurts. I don't feel good. My tummy hurts. I need to come home. Pick me up, you know, kind of thing, right? So here's the deal. Is that a weekend or summer break? If not, it is the child's job to go to school all day, every day when there is school. So that's, that's it. And then this is when you as a parent need to show up as a sturdy leader. Again, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be this militant, very strict and um, aggressive um, communication style, but it's more about you having a communication with your child ahead of the time. This is expectation and this is part of your responsibility and therefore we're going to work towards it, all right? And if your child whines and complains and all that, you can validate Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I know school may not be your best part of your life. I get it. And this is your responsibility. So we're going to have to make it happen. And then talk about, all right, what is the minimum commitment? At least wherever they are at baseline, I want you to start going to school every day, even though if not full time, that could be step one, right? And if the child is going to school every day, but not really attending full day, then the next level of expectation would be, Well, since you're going to school every day on a school day, and I want you to stay at least half of the day, no matter what, you can take a break in school, but your job and responsibility and expectation is to go to school every day, at least half a day. If your child is going to school kind of sporadically here and there, then being consistent is the next level. Okay, from now on, you're going to school every day, and then at least a half day in school each day, if not full day, right? So again, kind of having this stepping stone milestones so then you and your child can work from the bottom up approach instead of starting from the top. Okay, no matter what, you have to go to school all day, every day when the child hasn't been even going to school at all for like a month, you know, kind of thing. Then that would be a too much of a gap, right? So you're going to have to set the rule and communicate the expectation clearly in a chill manner. How about this? I get this a lot. So I have been talking to so many families who have been interested in my online program, by the way, thank you. And many parents are so ready to join the program. However, they say, well, we're gonna have to ask my child and I wanna make sure my child is on board with it. 100% I agree. If the child is not engaging, then chances are it's going to be a difficult to see the results, right? However, If you think this is the right approach, then you can start the program and have the child easily and slowly and gradually warm up to the program. That's an option as well. It really depends on your belief system as a parent. And if you think this is the right thing or this is a good thing for your child, even though your child is like, huffing and puffing or kind of loosey goosey or not really half baked, you know, kind of commitment or maybe type of answer. I think there's a chance. There is a chance for you to actually help your child because after all, your child may be making that decision based on their assumption, which may or may not be true or some sort of fear. Look, if your child is in total passenger seat and not willing to do any work and not considering persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND as a problem because they can live their life, then it's going to be a hard sell, right? However, if you know that your child is struggling, whether it's frustrated or they feel like their life is limited or restricted or constantly living in fear because they're afraid of having flare-ups, symptoms, then you know you need to do something because if you don't do anything, chronic pain and FND can get better kind of on its own, but that's rather a small percentage of people. And it's to me, it's almost like a cavity. Like if you don't do anything, it's not going to go away. You have to do something. And since your child is a teenager, 
this is the golden opportunity to get that intervention or some sort of treatment or a help towards recovery because once they hit adulthood, guess what? It gets harder and harder for you as a parent to sort of make a decision for them, right? Or more importantly, the recovery is going to take substantially longer when they hit adulthood. So that's why I really want to work with children and adolescents and have an early recovery so then they can get their life back. Now, I want to say as a parent, remember, you have the final decision making ability. Remember that. And number two, also digging a little bit of where your fear about this current parenting style is coming from. Is it the shame or the guilt or your own anxiety? What is it? Leave a comment below because I would love to know. And these are common things, by the way, if that's you, all right? And number three, it is totally okay to get the professional help, whether to work with a therapist about your own parenting style or have the therapist work with the child about overcoming whatever the resistance that your child is presenting, whether it's towards a chronic pain or FND treatment or anything else like schools and other things, right? Including chores and stuff like that. But remember, your therapist or your child's therapist can never be a replacement for you as parents. In other words, the child's therapist cannot be and will not be a parent, right? So you cannot just delegate the parenting ability to this therapist. The therapist is there to guide you and your child to have this family function through communication, expectations, and all of that stuff that goes into the family function. So it's okay to get the professional help. Now, if you and your bright teenage child are ready to take actionable solutions to resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND, then you might be a good candidate for my program. I've been running the pilot program for an entire year and many families are getting benefits almost to the point of becoming symptom free. At the very least, they are getting their life back, which is so amazing. And it is very liberating to see the child growing through this program. So click the link below to schedule a call to talk to me today and see if you qualify for the program. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.